I was gonna show you this, but I didn't. Or the inverter, rather. So there's a Everstart 400 watt inverter. It's not too powerful, but it's better than none. Um, on the side here, <clears throat> which goes through a cable grommet. So it won't back out. <clears throat> and if we open it, it terminates into a bunch of stuff. Right here is the cable. It terminates here. And it splits. It doesn't actually. It terminates here. And the reason why it terminates is because there is a split right here where that is. And this white cable right here goes out to a key switch right here. This red wire just goes back. And it goes on to the inverter. Then we have this ca this cable here, which is a light, a red LED, which terminates into this momentary switch here. And then the positive lead goes to the positive, and the negative is interrupted from the switch. So essentially, you press the switch, it turns on. Um, so what this allows us to do is basically have it switched so if I grab the key notice it's off currently yeah, even though the switch here is on but as soon as you turn it it powers on Now it's off, but if you turn the switch, turns on, and you can plug things into it. You know, it's just an inverter. But here's where it gets even cooler, because I have a C13 style power plug on the front, which allows me to be able to take a stand like computer cord and plug it in, which terminates into right here. Yes, it's unplugged. Terminates here, and it goes to this outlet. This outlet is just the C13's 120. Just plugs right on the wall, and this is 120 also. So it just plugs right in the outlet, and that allows me to be able to plug this charger in. And if I plug this in, it's plugged into the wall. If I plug this in, it powers the charger, and it starts charging. What's also great with this setup is I can still power things while it's charging. But realistically, that's going to take away the charge from the battery, which is right here, when I could just plug whatever I need to plug in or charge or power in here because it's getting power from the wall you know the battery is a sealed lead acid battery it's in a 12 volt 8 amp hour i plan on getting another one because this is an ignition switch it has that position start which is momentary but it's got a second position so i plan on wiring another cable and buying another higher capacity battery on the second pole. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. also plan on buying some Dean's connectors and attaching a solar panel or putting a solar panel in it. I don't know. Because, you know, obviously this is great to be able to plug it in and charge things, but solar is one of the main things we want to do. And being able to just take this like this, close it up, Take it outside. It, it's it's portable. It's got a handle. Lay, weighs less than twenty pounds. It's about sixteen pounds. Set it up. If it suns, if it's like twelve o'clock, have it like this. Or if we need to, we can get a stick or something and just prop this up wherever we need to. It sticks straight down, so you can figure out where you need it and just prop it up. 
I think it's great. I have some extra wire nuts and some extra wire and another switch in case something breaks and we need to repair. It works great. It's reliable. Um, and just to show you that it works, I'll grab something. I'll just grab this since it's the only thing I have on hand, actually. So, you know what? No. It's portable. The whole reason why I built it is because I wanted something portable. Take it around over here. So, I'll unplug my lamp. And I'll plug it in to the back of the inverter. Like this. And it's... Should be actually on already. So, we grab our key here. And we turn it, it, it does have a delay, and it powers on. This is a non-LED bulb, so it does turn the internal fan on on the inverter. As you can hear, it's pretty loud. It does not like this on high, so that's medium there. The draw is about 25%, it says. As soon as I turn it on high, though, it starts to go to low battery warning. You hear it starting to chirp. And to prove to you that this does charge, not that you don't believe me, but I'm probably uploading this to my YouTube channel as well, so they probably won't. I will plug the cable in to the wall over here. And it should, it might still chirp, I don't know. Nope. See, it doesn't chirp anymore because it's. It's still putting off, well actually, it sorta of is. But not as fast, cause listen. See how fast it's going unplugged? If I plug it in. It slows down. Another way I can prove it is pop this open. And grab the lamp cord. Ah, come on. And plug it in here instead. You can see it works. Powers it. But watch, if I unplug this, it turns off. So, plug it in, just plugged in you can see it turns on unplug it turns off so it works great it's very reliable so far um for those of you on youtube i'll put a put the um test that i did up i have a test i did I'll put the numbers up for y'all as you can see this is also a float charger so the great thing about it being a float charger Oops, that was loud. The great thing about it being a float is I can just leave this plugged in. And even when it's full, even, even when it's full, it'll just, when it drops below 12 volts, it'll power itself on again. So as you can see, it says full right now, but if it ever gets below 12 volts, so I wonder if it'll do it if I plug it in. Maybe not. But if it gets below 12 volts, it'll kick on. Oh, it did. See, now it says charging. So, it says full. 
turn this on. It's not drawing much power, but if I plug the lamp in, turn it off. If I plug the lamp in, and we turn it on, lamp's on in a second. There it is, the lamp's now on. This is charging. And once it gets above 12 volts again, it'll turn itself back on and start charging it again, or stop charging it again. Works great, and it's portable, so you just take it wherever you need to go. I'll let you know if I ever update this. I hope to, again, I hope to buy solar panels for it. The other great thing is, I can leave these attached, and if I'm leaving this somewhere, I can just take the keys with me. And then, I can just put it on like this, power it, or put the, the belt clip on, or whatever. And if I don't want to lose the keys again, just grab it and line it up and... obviously sort of hard to do one-handed line it up and clip it on and you're off to the races unplug your cord wrap it up throw it in the inside wrap it around the outside whatever and there you go took me about a day and a half and it's including trial and error and fiddling around with recording and stuff so three hours and I hope to make schematics for it at one point and plans and I'll upload that.